Hello everyone, my name is Guillaume. Welcome to Tolman's Guitars and Basses. And today I have the absolute honor to be here with Stephen Wilson from Porcupine Tree and many other things. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's a bit hot, but <laughs> it will survive. How's the tour going for you? Yeah, it's great. I mean, the, the, the festival season has only just started for us. This is our third one. We're in Tollwood today, so this is going to be our third one. Um, we're enjoying it. I mean, the weather's been insanely hot, but you know what? It could be worse. It could be the opposite, couldn't it? So that's probably... It could, it could. And I saw, uh, I would have been at Hellfest. This is my home country. This is like a festival right. that I appreciate a lot. And I uh, saw some footage. It looked like fun. It looked like you guys were genuinely having fun on stage. Yeah, I mean, those kind of shows, you kind of got nothing to lose. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, you, we went on before Iron Maiden. And in some ways, it's the best slot because everyone's there. Yeah. In some ways, it's the worst slot because everyone there has been standing there all day. <laughs> They haven't eaten, they haven't been to the bathroom, they're hot, they're tired, and they're just waiting to see Maiden or Slayer, whoever it is. Yeah, that yeah. And so you kind of, uh, you kind of uh, it's a little bit of a battle, really, to try and keep the, get those people to, you know, to pay attention. And, but I think we pulled it off. I yeah. think we pulled it off. I think at least some people enjoyed it. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we had fun. That's awesome. That's really good to hear. And while I'm on the topic, congratulations on your French. I was really happy to hear you speak French on stage. That was my... <laughs> five, yeah, five years learning French at school and there's only a tiny little bit left, but I try to use it when I can, yeah. That was, that was plenty and that was beautiful. Um, okay, so you, you're on tour. My first question is, how does it feel right now playing the back catalogue and the old songs after 10 plus years hiatus like this? Like... Are there any new arrangements, any new things that you're particularly excited about revisiting those songs? Well, you'd expect me to say it, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it is genuinely, <laughs> it is genuinely a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's been 12 years since we played that material on stage, and we're a little bit more old. We're older now, we're more experienced, we've gone off and done other things. So we can come back to this kind of um, collective organism, which is Porcupine Tree, with a lot less baggage than, than we might have had at the time. Um, I mean, a lot of that material I hadn't even listened to for, for so long. So I'm, I'm hearing some of it, and I'm, yeah, that's a pretty good song, that, you know. <laughs> and sometimes you're too close to things to appreciate them. And I think now we have enough distance to be able to appreciate those songs. But also, I think it's very important to mention, this was very important to us, that we didn't simply come back to play the old material. Yeah. We did make a new record. And so we are making a point of playing all of that new record. Um, I've never kind of understood this thing where a band, you know, a band that's been around for a long time, they make a new record, then they go on tour and they play one song <laughs> from the new record, and then they drop it after three shows. No, it's not us. So we're making a point of playing all of the new material. And we're excited about it. You know, it, it stands to reason that the material in the most recent past is the, is the material that reflects most where we are at as musicians right now. Yeah. Some of the older music, I don't recognize necessarily mm. the person that wrote those songs, yeah. but I can still enjoy them. Objectively, I can enjoy them. But I, I feel very attached, obviously, to the more recent music. So the, the kind of juxtaposition of the two, I think it's worked really well. I think the audience have appreciated it. We, we, you know, one of the things we don't have that I think a lot of older bands have. And it's a nice thing to have, and it's also, it can also be a, a negative thing, which is we don't have hits. And I think when you're, when you're expected to play certain songs, yeah, no. um, that can sometimes be a double-edged sword. And we don't, we, we're not really in that position. Mm. I think the fans almost expect yeah. the unexpected. Yeah. They, don't, they don't know what they're gonna hear when, we, when they come to see Pork Pantry now. There's a couple of songs, you know, that tend to be, you know, more favoured than others. But generally speaking, we don't have that baggage of the big hit singles. And much as I might, you know, rue that, it also is an advantage in some ways too. Yeah. Speaking of how, with that amount of cross genre and sort of uh, transcending of different styles of music, how much of a challenge was it for you to include the new records? knowing that this is a thing that has a life of its own and not necessarily a concept because of how long it took to write it, mm. to include that into a set list? So I think the, the simple answer to that question is not to overthink it, not okay. to over-intellectualize it. it. By definition, it is porcupine tree music. There's something about the music that the three of us make together that just sounds, as we discovered, yeah. 
Because, you know, and again, sometimes that can be a negative thing. You're trying to do, let's do something really different. And you do it and everyone just says, oh, it just sounds like you, you know. <laughs> and, I, and I've had this time and time again in my solo career because I like the fact that every record kind of stands alone, has mm. a completely distinctive sound quality. But sometimes I'm frustrated that when I think I've done something really different, I play it to my friends and they're just like, just sounds like you, you know. Like you. So I think there's an element of that with, with PT too, that every time the three of us get together and make music, there's something about the ingredients that will always create this porcupine tree sound, whatever that is. And I, I don't try and explain what that is. So I think, you know, without wishing to overanalyze things, the new material does seem to slot very beautifully and, and effortlessly in alongside the old material. I don't feel there's a there's very much a, a divide in that sense. Mm. Although there are things about the new record that are new, mm -hmm. it's also very recognizably yeah. ha, it recognizably has a porcupine tree identity. Yeah. No questions. Yeah, you, you, there's just some things you cannot shake off, regardless yeah. of how much you're trying to go in different directions. It's still you. Yeah, and I, and I guess that's something that you have to embrace at the end of the Absolutely. day. Um, so no matter the fact you like the idea that you you know you've done something different. It's, you know, it's like when you look in the mirror, you only see the things that are annoying to you. Mm. You don't see the thing that everyone else sees um, and they just see you. So you kind of tend to focus on the minutiae and the little things. Oh, we've done that a bit differently. We've done that a bit differently. But of course, there's a lot that's still the same. Anyway. I, no, I, I've, for what, for what matters, I absolutely agree with that. I'm really looking forward to hearing the full show and the full set list in that context. Uh, we have to talk about closure, continuation, mm. even just as a concept and a title for mm. this album. And I'm going to ask the question that everyone wants me to ask you. Is it closure or is it continuation? And we really don't know. And I, and I think, enough. you know, the, the title is as much for us as it is for everyone else yeah. because we, we don't know. I think we're well past the point now where we think of Porcupine Tree as having a career trajectory. Yeah. If we do a record, it's because we believe it's what, you know, if we release a record mm. as we did this one, and, and you know, goodness knows we worked on this for enough time. We were, <laughs> we were working on some of these songs 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So it could equally have been the case that we decided not to release it at all. Mm. We did decide to release it because we felt it was worth releasing. We felt it was distinctively different enough while still sounding part of this continuum of, of porcupine tree work. Mm. So who knows if that, situation will arise again we may write some more songs and decide there's nothing new here there's no point releasing these there's nothing to be added to the legacy by releasing these songs mm. we might get together in a couple of years and write some songs where we think wow this is you know this is again a really fresh direction for the band but until we try we don't know yeah. and we're not going to let ourselves get sucked into a thing oh we've got to deliver an album we signed a contract you know yeah. and that's a scenario i would never allow myself to be in again anyway and I've been lucky generally through my career that I haven't been subject to a lot of that kind of pressure. Mm. You have to deliver an album because you signed a contract, you've taken an advance. I've been, I've been able to maintain a kind of distance from, and I, I, from that kind of scenario. And that kind of willful, willfully trying to distance oneself from this idea of um, a career pattern, a, a, a sort of success trajectory, mm even making a particular genre uh, has kind of served me well in the long term, even if it's been frustrating in the short term, because we've never really, yeah. we've never really fitted in anywhere. Yeah, and I, I understand that that kind of freedom is just priceless creatively for you not to feel the pressure of doing anything just only for the sake of doing it because you feel the need to do it. Um, I have to ask you one last question um, and then we'll go talk about gear with Jason and everyone will have a little tour on stage. Um, do you feel like you've said, at this point in time, you've said what you wanted to say with Porcupine Tree? You've accomplished what you wanted to accomplish and it's time for you to move on to new things and different things in it. I've, I think Porcupine Tree as an entity is very fulfilled mm. and, and part of the, the closure continuation statement, if you like, is that we felt like there was something left yeah. unsaid. I think we've said that with this record. So now, so I think the simple answer to your question is yes, but that doesn't preclude the, the possibility of making more records. Okay. But I don't certainly, don't, in, in a broader sense, I certainly don't feel that 
you know, as a musician myself. In fact, my next solo record, I feel, is, is again, something very different for me, and mm. I'm very excited about it. As long as I keep feeling that, I'll always be making records. If this was the last record we ever made, I think I'm right in saying, for, speaking on, on behalf of all three of us, we would be very happy that this would be a, a full stop to a very fine career and catalog. That's, that's perfect. Like, that's the answer I was hoping for. And I'm really good. happy that this ends okay. on a really good feeling like this. It should be a positive thing, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so very much for your time. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that part. We'll go on to stage now and have a little bit of a rig rundown and talk about uh, all, all the things that come into the making of those albums. Good luck on stage. Yeah. Someone are up there. <laughs> thank you again so very much okay. and have a good show. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, guys, and now we're on stage with Jason, who's taking for the whole band, apparently. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, as, as far as guitars are concerned, yes. <laughs> but you're also a drum tech and a keyboard tech. Yeah, I'm a drum tech and a keyboard tech. I, I started off as a guitar tech 30 odd years ago, and then I moved on to doing drums. I did drums for Gavin for, yeah, yeah. Um, for years um, with Porcupine Tree and again with King Crimson. Um, I've been Richard's tech as well. Um, That's awesome. And now I'm back. Doing Stephen. Um, yeah, right. I've been doing it for three days so far, so <laughs> on this tour. So. We'll, just, we'll just go over everything. Okay. And, yeah, because some of it I'm familiar with, yep. and I know the man behind the, the brains yeah, there. Yeah, Daniel at the gig ring. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Should we start with the board? Then we'll talk yeah, sure, about yeah. the amps and absolutely. move towards guitars? Yes, yeah, right, good. Awesome. So how do you run the board in general? Like, in terms of inputs, outputs, okay. how do you work? We go straight into the volume pedal here. OK. Um, and then into the, the board, uh, the, gig, the gig rig board. He has two outputs. Uh, the Bad Cat amp has two inputs, a dirty and a clean. Yeah. Um, he runs both at the same time, yeah. simultaneously. Um, so the outputs from the gig rig, uh, depending on, on which effect and what uh, song it is, he will either be coming out of the clean channel yeah. um, or the dirty channel, or sometimes both at the same time, okay. and mixes them together. But all that is done um, with the gig rig, yeah, yeah. there's no switching at all involved on the bad cat and yeah, the yeah. amp, uh, so it's that's all done with that. Um, and he has got down here. You'll see there's a bad cat and a HK. Previously on one of his solo tours, he was using a huge cat, cat there now, as yeah. well. So that's still in there from that. Um, that hasn't been removed at all. All right. Um, but running both amps at the same time? Uh, no, we don't use this one at all. That's just a spare. Okay. Okay. Uh, just in case, we 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 just use the one. Yeah, um, always good to have. Yep. All right. Okay, awesome. Uh, and so everything's controlled by the gig rig? Yep. And it, do you know if he only uses like presets with all the MIDI stuff or if it's like kind of on the fly? Type I think of thing? some of it's on the fly. As okay. I said, I'm fairly new to this rig. Yeah. Um, so I haven't managed to delve into it uh, <laughs> quite, quite as much as I would like yet. Um, but I think, I think some of it's um, switched uh, through the gig rig. Um, all right. No, but that's awesome. And also, it's, uh, I love the consistency because that's the board. I think that, that board has to be five years old or something like that. Uh, probably more than that, actually, yeah? now, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, I, I remember talking to Daniel about this okay. specific board uh, because, yeah, he came to visit afterwards, and that's, it's, it's a beauty. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It is. It is. It is. It's very <laughs> so, well put together, you know, but, but Daniel's a, an expert. At all he that, is. You know? It really is. Yeah. And, uh, and it's nice to know that Stephen's also a bit of a creature of habit and that Absolutely. very few pedals have changed yeah. on theirs. Absolutely, like. yeah. Okay, yeah. so from the board, into both channels yes. of the bad cat. Yeah, All right. absolutely, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing it. Uh, do you mind having a look at the guitars? Absolutely, yeah. One more thing I should probably say about oh, yeah? the, the bad cat. Um, we have the Unleash on top here as well. Oh. Um, it's kind of acts a little bit like a, you know, the old Marshall power break or whatever yeah. it was. So um, it basically give, gives you a huge amount of extra boost. Um, so, right. so the speaker output from this plugs into this. And then the speaker output from this actually goes into the cabinet, um, oh. and it also it sort of acts. It, it's it's like a an extra am amplifier. Um, yeah, yeah. But it, but it also gives you a little bit like that uh, Marshall power brake type. Right. Um, attenuation. So there's like yeah. It's also how much of an effect does it have on the sound itself? A lot. Like a lot. A lot. Yeah. When when it switch switches in, this is all switched through the gig rig. Yeah. Um, so there's two channels on it. Um, so. Yeah, it's an amazing when it kicks into channel two, which mm. is the real high gain one. It, it's just a huge amount of extra boost. Wow. Huge amount of boost. All you right. Know, these, these amps are loud anyway. You put that on it, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's just, it blows that, that's just, that's That's plugs after the power amp, after yeah, everything. Yeah, and it's just absolutely. overdriving the speaker yep, more. Yep. yep. Spe speaker output, 
into, into the input the... of this and then the, the out speaker output of this into the cabinet. I think that's the first time I see one in yeah. real life. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool. Thank you. Okay. I would have missed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a very important part of the rig, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very I believe so. Rig, yeah. So, we're in guitar world now. What can you tell us about? Pick one first. Okay. So, yeah. um, I'm going to start with this one, actually, because this is my favorite. Okay. Um, he doesn't actually play this in the show. This is just a spare. Um, right. But this is one of my favorite guitars. Um, he's had it for a long time now. I think this is his first ever PRS. Oh, got, wow. Um, so that would have been probably 20, 22, 23 years ago. Yeah, something, yeah, something yeah. Like that. Maybe a lot long, longer. But yeah, yeah, this is one of my favorite ones. Um, this is, uh, we tuned to drop D. Okay. Um, and it's just a spare. He hasn't used it yet. All right. On, on the tool. Um, and is the, the tram, everything's functional? Is yeah, it blocked? Absolutely, or? Yeah, absolutely. No, okay. no, it's all fully you functional. That. All fully functional. Yep. Okay. That's, all good. That's probably one of my favorites. Um, what about strings on that guitar for the string gauge? You're having? String is 10 to 52 on 10 that. 10 to 52 yeah. on the 10 drop. 10 to 52 right. on, on cool. those. Um, he uses 11 to 52 on the Telecasters. Uh, this is his main guitar. This is uh, tuned tune to E. Um, it's a custom shop. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, meant to look old. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it does uh, a pretty good job at it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, this is his main guitar. So he plays probably about a almost a half the set on this one. Okay. Um, and that's in standard E tuning. Yeah, right. Does that uh, also apply to the older material, that the more metal yeah, rock? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, that's he, plays, awesome. he plays quite a lot of the old, the old stuff on that as well. All right. Um, this is probably gets the second most use. Yeah. Um, then another P, uh, P, PRS. PRS, um, yeah. This one's in drop D. Okay. So this is the main drop D guitar. It gets played on sort of like four or five songs. Okay. Um, and again, 10 to 52s on that one. It's beautiful. And then this one. Now this is a drop. I see. So it's 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 normally a drop C guitar. Okay. Um, but there's one song off the new album where we actually tune the the E string. So which would, yeah, yeah. would be a C. We'd tune that down to B. Okay. Um, so we're using 10 to 10. That's not a. That's a 56. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's a standard 10 to 52 set, but we right. changed the 52 for a 56. Okay. Because um, we know when it's down to B, it's. You know, yeah, you need the, You need a little around. bit more uh, tension yeah. on there. Uh, absolutely. All right. Um, and so then, a fairly uh, consistent string set. Like I've seen yeah. some players like going from very extreme, like depending on the guitar and the type of playing they're going to go with. So it's nice to like. Yeah, yeah, even on the downtune guitar, you're still going to use a, a 10 on the, on the high yeah. E. Yeah. yeah, makes it easy as well. Yeah. Um, so this is the spare for the E tuning. Mm -hmm. um, so this is 11 to 52 yeah, right. on here. Um, again, on, as both tellies are. Okay, um, that's the Joe Strummer, the I Mexican so. signature. This is Mexican, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that's the one. He's had that one for quite a long time as I well. I think he has, yeah. I think he has. Uh, we've already done that one. So yeah. on this one here, again, another PRS. This is the spare uh, for the drop D. Okay. Um, and drop C tuning. And in um, terms of action, do you do anything specific on the setup or is it just... Not really. Um, to be honest, since I've taken over the gig, all the guitars are pretty much set up anyway. Uh, <laughs> so I, I did a little bit of intonation adjustment on one. But yeah, right. Apart from that, it's... it's okay, yeah, it's not like fine. crazy, like precise low action yeah. type of thing. Because no. he digs in pretty hard Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, he does. Well, that's one of the things actually on the, uh, on the D tune guitar. Yeah. Uh, um, sorry, the, um, yeah, the drop D. Uh, there's a couple of songs where I actually have to drop the tuning of the E string or the D string. Um, because it, it picks yeah, it out so of tune. Yeah, so I have, I have to drop it like three or four cents. Oh, yeah, uh, right. Just, yeah. just because he hits it so hard. Um, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so that's the main electrics. And then we have a couple of acoustics as well. Mm -hmm. um, that Stephen plays. Um, this is his main, uh, Takamini. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, he plays this on uh, three or four songs okay. um, during the set. Um, and then we have a spare for it. It's just a... Right. Again, another... Any particular reason why those guitars is just like... Um, guitars that he's familiar I with? Yeah. Or? This, um, when I worked for him pre previously, we were using Babbage guitars. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, with the resonator those. strings. That, yeah. That's it, where they come out like that. Yep. Um, but for some reason, he's switched over to these. I don't okay. know why. Okay. Um, that will be a question for, for Stephen. <laughs> well, I'll try and ask him again later. <laughs> um, and that's basically that. These, yeah. these two Randy plays. Um, okay. That one's a spare for Randy. Um, 
And, uh, right. Yeah, so. hopefully we can get over those guitars with Randy yeah, afterwards. Absolutely, yeah. uh, but that's awesome. All right. I'm, 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 I'm happy because I was expecting most of it. Okay. Like, I'm glad that, like, some details I could clear out with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it's so nice to have, like, the consistency of all those, like, and someone like you jumping in 20 years later yeah, and kind of already being familiar with some of the setup. Yeah, it's funny, actually, because, you know, so I've been working for these guys for, you know, um, I started in 2003. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So it's 20 been, years. It's 20 years. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, we took the 12-year break. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, but... Over those years, I've basically done every backline gig yeah, yeah. On, on this job, you know. So on That's this so gig. cool. So, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it was it's a pleasure fun. to meet you, and, and you, thank sir. you so much. No problem at all, and, thank uh, you. Have a good gig, have thank a good you. muting and switching and everything. <laughs> yeah, so, as long as I remember to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right, and we're finally here with Randy Maxstein, who's going to take us through his entire setup. Thank you so much for taking the time, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, why, what do you have? What are you using on this tour? Let's start with the guitars. Okay. Well, the, the main guitar I'm using is, uh, was made by a friend of mine named Harris Thor when I was 11 years old. That's so sick. So I've had this guitar for 24 years, because uh, I just turned 35. And it's essentially, it's, it's a parts guitar. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's a, it's a graphite neck, uh, carved top maple, mahogany back. Um, this thing has been all over the place with me. It's, plenty of wear yeah, and tear. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, um, but it's a total workhorse, and it was kind of built with, you know, all of the kind of tones I wanted in mind when I was a kid, which was this combination yeah. of, like, kind of Les Paul chunkiness and, and some Strat capabilities. So, you know, you, you've got the pull okay. there. and um, Which acts both on the neck and bridge? Or yeah, also? yeah, exactly, different positions. And then uh, the main thing too is it has a piezo I was, split. I was gonna ask that, what are those? Yeah, <laughs> these are, um, I believe this is Graftech Ghost uh, system. All right. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really glad I got this installed a long time ago because virtually 95% of the Porcupine Tree set mm. requires uh, those piezo splits. Oh, wow. So this is, this is my main guitar for that. What pickups are in that? Uh, are they still original? How many revisions of pickups did it go through? These two have always been there. This is a Demarzio Chopper, yeah. I believe. Um, this is a pickup called Class of 55, which I think is Seymour Duncan. Okay. And then this is a Seymour Duncan um, whole lot of humbucker. All right. Which was a later replacement. The original pickup was a Seymour Duncan Distortion. Okay. Which I had for years, but I, I kind of like the voicing of this a little bit better. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this this is like the main the main guitar for the show. Awesome. And then the second guitar, which also has piezos, is this um, Paul Reed Smith Hollow Body Two uh, piezo model. That's beautiful. Which is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um, it's what they call the Ten Top series, yeah, and yeah, yeah. super super lightweight. And uh, yeah, I was very happy to um, basically continue the sort of porcupine tree tradition. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Having yeah. a PRS yeah, on stage. Guitars, yeah. Um, and they've they've been wonderful. So uh, so yeah, this this is an amazing just yeah. just piece of art, really. Like uh, stock pickups and everything. Yeah, everything everything stocked the way they they. What sent about it to me. strings? Because I forgot to ask on the first one. Prefer Diodarios. Diodarios. Yep. Okay. Diodario. Um, ten to forty six, I believe. Okay. okay. Thirty. And then uh, this one might have elevens on it. Okay. Yeah, because it's just like. You know, the hollow body, it lends itself to more kind of jazz gaze. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Are they both in standard tuning, those two? They are. Okay. Um, they, but there's a lot of fluctuation between drop D. Yeah. So um, there's, there's a lot of tuning okay, back Okay, yeah, back yeah. You're forth. not swapping guitars every time you play drop D. It's just like, okay. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Um, and then this, these next two guitars, are they're kind of just used for very specific things. Uh, this wow. is made by um, an instrument maker called LSL in the yeah. States. Uh, beautiful Tele style guitar with a humbucker P90 mm -hmm. and uh, also some oh, oil yeah, tap splitting, options. Yeah. I use this for the drop C section of a song called right. uh, Anesthetize. So this is this is just permanently tuned down for about okay. five minutes of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the strings don't look much heavier for drop C. Like, is it? No, I, they're actually just just uh, tense. Yeah, you okay. Know? And players have different philosophies on Absolutely. that. Absolutely, yeah. Some people yeah, yeah. Um, prefer really heavy gauge strings, but I, I don't find that um, 
the lighter string really makes yeah, that much. Yeah, as long as you don't like, if you don't pick them out of tune, there's no need for. Yeah, more. Uh, exactly. How's the how's the neck on that? Because my only experience with LSL uh, T style guitars is the biggest, junkiest necks in the world. So I just it is. Wanted it's, to... it's, yeah, feel free. It's um. Yeah, it is pretty. Uh, it's okay. very uh, meaty. <laughs> it's not very forgiving. I remember yeah, when yeah. I when I got this guitar, the the primary reason was to sort of get myself out of my own comfort zone. Fair enough. Like with this guitar, because I basically grew up with it. I wanted to get away from having a tremolo, yeah. and um, it it really made it makes you work for it. You know, it brings out any of the nuances that you want or yeah. don't want in your playing. It's a different type of playing. Exactly, yeah, yeah. but it handles the heavy sounds very well. That's really. Sweet. And then um, finally, we've got this Strandberg um, mm. Viridian Green uh, NX6 um, model, Beautiful. which uh, is a great guitar. I'm, I'm I'm really happy to be associated with them. Mm as well. Um, the thing I like about this is it has uh, soar pickups. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is the soar Thornbucker. Nice. And these are called like vintage 60s or something. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, also a very wide range of tones. Yeah. But again, because of the piezo situation, I can only use it for like for a, a couple few, of tunes. Yeah. So it's got a little bit of back relief during the show. Oh, as yeah, well. <laughs> it's super light. I, I take this thing everywhere, all, all the hotel yeah, rooms yeah, yeah, yeah. and that kind of thing. I can imagine. Um, but su it, they're super fun to play, and, uh, and they sound great, and, and it gets a huge feature also in the song Anesthetize. Yeah. The original solo was played by Alex Lifeson, so yeah. I use this guitar to, to do that, that section of the song. That's awesome. And, All right. Yeah. Uh, where do those guitars go? Where do they go <laughs> when they go? Um, so I've got two, battle, two pedal boards set yeah. up, which is ideally it would all be on one, but mm -hmm. it's kind of an extension of just different modifications over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the basic way of breaking it down is my pedal board on the right is what I would call all my analog sort of front end stuff. Yeah. Wah wah, compression, uh, two different styles of fuzz, two, two different kinds of distortion yeah. slash you know, boost pedals. Uh, sort of MXR, Phase 90, mm -hmm. uh, 70s script reissue. And then the Vibe Machine is, is a really ball, great yeah. sort of uh, Univibe awesome. replication. Everything is going to the Gig Rig G3, yeah. which is the, the switching system. And I, I could not do the gig without, without this. It, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because the songs require so many patch changes at the yeah. drop of a hat. You yeah, know, from yeah. like really big distortion to really ethereal uh, ambient sounds yeah. and, and back and forth sometimes in the same section. So uh, a lot of time went into programming all, all of that. Did you, did you learn to use the G3 completely or did you have some help from Dan? Uh, Dan <laughs> was on, on call when I needed yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. him to be, but um, thankfully uh, I do have a, a local tech who, oh, awesome. who just sort of helped me yeah. understand basic MIDI programming because I'd yeah. never done that before. I'm still trying to like, we have a G2 in the studio. We love Dan and, and uh, everything Gig Rig does. Yeah. I'm still trying to understand how the thing works. Like it's been years, I'm just. It's a very deep piece yeah, of yeah, gear. Yeah, it does a lot. Thankfully, it's very intuitive, True. Um, which, which True. saved me a lot of time. Once you get used to how to do it, yeah. um, you can go pretty quickly. And I've been able to make some changes on the fly very yeah. easily. So um, kudos to Dan and the team for just having Absolutely. such an amazing piece of gear. Um, while we're on the subject of the gig rig, I also have something called the Remote Loopy 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is what my piezo split is going into. Okay. So that on a patch-by-patch -patch basis, I've, I've got it programmed with the TRS cable to yeah. turn the piezo on and off. Okay. So that I don't have to deal with volume Vol control. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's that on or so it's smart. not. And um, and that's, that's a really clever uh, sort of piece and, and a yeah. way to, to do that. Absolutely, okay. So then you, you come over here and now we get into the, the sort of dig, mostly digital yeah, yeah. portion, uh, this mission uh, volume pedal. Mm -hmm. I is, like, that, is that on the gig rig output or is it still looped into the gig rig? Yeah, everything is still going, uh, it's still routing to the gig rig. There's, okay. there's sort of a, um, a patch bay, a patch in, the bay back. in the back. Yeah, yeah. 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 okay. So everything gets routed through there. Yeah, all right. And I like having the volume pedal after all of the drives mm -hmm. and pre all of the sort of time-based effects because yeah. it allows me to sort of swell into delays and reverbs yeah, 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 yeah. and that kind of stuff and just control overall volume if, mm -hmm. I, if I need to. Some of, the, some of the heavier patches really howl, you know? So yeah, you yeah, yeah, no, of course. Back so it you... off just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
That's what Jason was saying with the offstage muting a little yeah, bit. As yeah, well. exactly. <laughs> so that's that's running uh, then from there into the Eventide H9, yep. which of course legendary, great piece. Absolutely. Uh, and then we sort of get into some Strymon stuff, the Big Sky Reverb, uh, the Maris Auto Bit Junior. It's mm. kind of a wild card. Um, I use it just in a couple spots for, yeah. for really extreme sort of glitch effects. Yeah. And then uh, Strymon Mobius mm -hmm. for uh, most of the modulation timeline for the delays. Yeah. Of course, the, the Eventide does a lot of different things, so I'm, I'm bringing that in for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but some... it's always one algorithm at a time, which it, can be limited. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They have the H90 now, which, which is really great, but yeah. I haven't had the time to integrate it yet. Yeah. Uh, so I use it for a lot of pitch effects and um, you know, also di different reverbs that, you know, even Tide and Strymon, both great, very different sound. Yeah. And um, last in the chain is this uh, little EP booster, which, you know, just, just slams the, the front end. Yeah, like, okay. When, when needed, you know, for solos or certain clean tones. Just give it yeah, a little yeah, more Yeah, we'll gain. have that run after the rest of the gain stages. And exactly. Everything. Okay. Is the, you mentioned that the other bit being kind of a in, uh, like, not full time. Is everything on the board, like, Staying there, or do you experiment a little bit? Are those any of those pedals that you swap in and out with other things? Or uh, once this gig came along, and I wanted—I mean, I had most of this stuff on the boards already. Yeah. But there were a couple of pieces that, because I do have—I'm a total pedal nerd. I've yeah. got a bunch of stuff at home, so I did carefully. <laughs> after my own home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I did carefully select what I thought I needed and yeah. what could cover uh, all of the ground because I, I do like having individual pedals whenever mm. possible you know i just i like that sort of old school I thing feel that. so um yeah once i kind of got it set I, I didn't feel the need to really move things around too much yeah and uh, once everything's patched in with the gig relay like, you don't want to have to redo every exactly. time like in between two days exactly so yeah. um so it's it's pretty locked in for now you know things could change in the future but yeah but um i'm, I'm really happy because you know i, I do other gigs and as well, mm. you know, like kind of blues rock stuff and, yeah. and whatever. And between everything, it looks like a lot to people, but with this gig especially, I, I assure you, every single every piece si is, yeah. is used and, and, and often. So. I can imagine, yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's a, awesome. it's a lot of fun. It's, it's honestly very neat, very pretty. <laughs> Congrats on that. Like, yeah. it's like I'm a sucker for really nice yeah, looking bolts nice as well. Colors and everything. <laughs> yeah, no, it's gorgeous. All right, so. Uh, everything loops back into the gig rig, and from the gig rig output, where do we go? Uh, so the the remote loopy for the piezo, mm -hmm. that's going just straight into a DI, yeah, into okay. the house. No additional processing on my end. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what he's doing out there. Probably a bit of EQ, maybe yeah. a little compression or something. Uh, but everything else is, is running into uh, this amp back here, which is a boutique uh, builder named Bill Landry okay. in the States. Uh, I just sort of happened upon him because when I was doing some research on amps for this gig, mm -hmm. I knew that I needed a two-channel amp and yeah. something that could really cover the, the extreme heavies and, and nice cleans. He did a great job on this, and um, it's, actually, it's, it's only taped up because the logo fell off, but it's a Saldano 412. Okay, stock speakers? Yeah, uh, vintage 30s. Okay, awesome. And uh, yeah. That's and, really cool. I have, the, I have no idea about the brand or the amp itself so i'm really looking forward to hearing it yeah yeah it's, it's, it's a big sound um all the you know the techs and stuff have, have loved uh the way yeah. it sounds so. yeah, yeah yeah and so is it the only amp do you carry a spare do you bring anything else on the I, road i've got the spare okay. 100 watt if okay. we need it okay uh, thankfully we haven't had to use it yet yeah fingers crossed yeah exactly awesome. all right uh, thank you so very much for your time thank I'm you really really looking forward to the gig and uh yeah thank you Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, guys, and that was it. I hope you really enjoyed that video. Uh, thank you to Steven, thank you to Randy, to Jason, to everyone for allowing us to be on stage and check out their gear and talk a little bit to Steven about the album. Uh, if you haven't, go check out Porcupine Tree and their latest record. Um, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you don't miss out any future uploads. Uh, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.